Welcome music lovers. Join us today as we delve into the captivating yet tumultuous life of Andy Gibb, the youngest brother of the iconic Bee Gees. From his meteoric rise to fame as a pop sensation to the personal struggles that ultimately led to his tragic demise. So let's dive in. Andrew Roy Gibb, born the 5th of March 1958 at Stretford Memorial Hospital in Stretford, Lancashire, England. Andy was the youngest among his siblings, born to Barbara and Hugh Gibb. Barbara hailed from Irish and English ancestry, while Hugh's heritage was Scottish and English. Andy had four siblings, his sister, Leslie Evans, and three brothers, Barry, along with fraternal twins Robin and Maurice. At six months old, Andy immigrated with his family to Queensland, Australia, where they settled on Crib Island near Brisbane. Over the years, the family moved between Brisbane and Sydney. In January 1967, at nine years old Andy and his family returned to the United Kingdom as his older brothers, the Bee Gees, started gaining international fame. In his childhood, Andy Gibb was described by his mother, Barbara, as a mischievous yet endearing character, often sneaking off to the stables to spend time with his horses instead of attending school. Despite his antics, he would return home claiming he had been in class smelling of horse manure. Producer and film director Tom Kennedy also recalled Andy's playful nature, mentioning that he was indulged by his parents, Hugh and Barbara. Andy would even request a limo to roam London with his friends and money to go to the cinema, a luxury uncommon for a child of his age at the time. Despite his cheekiness, Andy was remembered for his golden heart, though he would occasionally try to persuade adults to buy him beer when he was only 11 or 12. Victimized by classmates who perceived him as having a superiority complex because of his famous brothers, Andy found solace in his music. At the age of 13, he left school and started playing guitar, gifted to him by his older brother Barry. Andy honed his musical skills at tourist clubs in Ibiza, Spain, where his parents relocated, and later on the Isle of Man, his brother's birthplace and the Gibb family's residence at the time. In June 1974, Andy embarked on his musical journey by forming his first band, Melody Fair, named after a Bee Gees song. The group comprised local Isle of Man musicians John Alderson on guitar, Stan Hughes on bass, and John Stringer on drums. Managed by Andy's mother Barbara, Melody Fair secured regular gigs across the island's hotel circuit. Andy's first recorded venture, in August 1973, featured a Maurice Gibb composition titled, My Father Was a Rebel, which Maurice both produced and played on, although it remained unreleased. Another track from the session, Windows of My World, co-written by Andy and Maurice, also showcased Andy's burgeoning talent. At the encouragement of his brother Barry, Andy made his way back to Australia in 1974, with Barry believing that the country's music scene, which had proven beneficial for the Bee Gees, would also serve Andy well. Andy's sister Leslie had already settled in Australia with her family, providing another reason for his return. Joining Andy on this journey were John Alderson and John Stringer, who hoped to form a band alongside him. Under the production of Cole Joy, Andy, Alderson, and Stringer, began recording a series of Andy's compositions. Among these was a demo titled, To a Girl, featuring Maurice Gibb on organ, which Andy debuted on Australian television's The Ernie Sigley Show. Despite Sigley's announcement that it was from Andy's upcoming album, it remained unreleased. In November of the same year, six more demos were recorded under Joy's guidance, including tracks like, Words and Music, Westfield Mansions, and Flowing Rivers, the only one later released. However, Andy's financial security, courtesy of his brothers, allowed for a somewhat sporadic work ethic, leading to frustration for Alderson and Stringer, who eventually returned to the UK due to the lack of consistent opportunities. Andy soon found himself as part of the band Zenta, where he took on vocal duties alongside Rick Alford on guitar, Paddy Lelliot on bass, Glenn Greenhouse also on vocals, and Trevor Norton on drums. Zenta had the opportunity to support renowned international performers like Sweet and the Bay City Rollers during their tours in Sydney, Australia. While there were plans to release, Can't Stop Dancing, it ultimately didn't materialize, although Gibb did perform the song on television, notably on the revived bandstand show hosted by Daryl Summers. Although Zenta later served as Andy's backing band, they were not involved in his recording sessions around 1975, during which Andy collaborated with the Australian jazz fusion group Crossfire. Words and Music, Andy's debut single, was released exclusively on the Arta label in Australia and New Zealand, which was owned by Cole Joy. Coupled with another composition by Andy, Westfield Mansions, the song marked his entry into the music scene. With its release in 1976, the single climbed its way to the top 20 on the Sydney music charts, solidifying his place as a budding artist. The ballad quickly became one of his most recognized hits, showcasing his talent and potential to a growing audience. 
Andy and his girlfriend, receptionist Kim Reader, tied the knot at the Wayside Chapel on July 11, 1976, in Seven Hills an outer suburb of Sydney where they resided. Their meeting was unconventional, sparked by a shared interest in breeding Staffordshire Bull Terriers, introduced by Andy's sister Leslie at a dog show. However, their marital bliss was short-lived as they moved to West Hollywood in 1977, where Andy became entangled in the drug scene, particularly cocaine. Reader recalled his descent into depression and paranoia which was fueled by his drug use, leading to their eventual separation. Despite their split, Reader returned to Australia and gave birth to their daughter, Peter, in January 1978, with their divorce finalized later that year. Assumptions Andy's rapid rise to fame, coupled with the overshadowing presence of his older brothers in his music career, exacerbated his struggles with depression. Even despite his success, Andy grappled with overwhelming pressure and the inability to break free from his family's legacy. Robert Stigwood, the manager of the BGS at the time, recognized Andy's talent and signed him to his label, RSO Records, in early 1976 upon hearing some of Andy's demo tapes. This led him to relocate to Miami Beach, Florida, where he again collaborated with his brother Barry and co-producers Albie Galutin and Carl Richardson on songwriting and recording sessions. Utilizing the renowned Criteria Studios in Miami, Andy, with Barry producing, embarked on creating his debut album, Flowing Rivers, in late 1976. Notably, Eagles guitarist Joe Walsh contributed to two tracks on the album. The album's lead single, I Just Want To Be Your Everything, penned by Barry and featuring his backing vocals, soared to number one on both the US and Australian charts, becoming one of the most played records of the year. Although it achieved lesser success in the UK, it still managed to break into the top 30. With 8 out of 10 tracks composed by Andy, many originating from his time in Australia, Flowing Rivers, gained widespread acclaim. Bolstered by another number one single, Love Is Thicker Than Water, co-written by Andy and Barry Gibb, the album quickly attained platinum status by September 1977. The album's success coincided with the Bee Gees' dominance on the charts with their contributions to the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack, marking a significant milestone in Andy's blossoming career. Andy embarked on his second album, Shadow Dancing, collaborating once again with the Gibb, Galutin, Richardson production team. Released in April 1978, it emerged as his highest charting album in both America and Canada. The title track, penned by all four Gibb brothers, was introduced as a single in the United States in April 1978 and swiftly ascended to the top spot on the charts, beginning a seven-week reign as number one. Achieving platinum status and earning the distinction of being Billboard's number one song of 1978, Shadow Dancing solidified Andy's position as a prominent figure in the music industry. Notably, Andy became the first male solo artist to achieve three consecutive number one singles on the Billboard Hot 100, with all of these accomplishments occurring within less than a year, from July 30, 1977, to July 29, 1978. The album also spawned two further top ten singles, An Everlasting Love, reaching number five, and Our Love Don't Throw It All Away, peaking at number nine. In 1979, Andy joined forces with the Bee Gees, ABBA, and Olivia Newton-John to perform at the Music for UNICEF concert at the United Nations General Assembly, a globally broadcast event. Following this, he returned to the studio to commence recording sessions for his final full studio album, After Dark. In March 1980, just prior to the album's release, Andy's last top 10 single made its mark on the charts. Desire, originally recorded for the Bee Gees 1979 album Spirits Having Flown, featured their original track, including Andy's guest vocal. Another single from After Dark, a duet with family friend Olivia Newton-John titled I Can't Help It, also made its way into the top 20. Later in the year, Andy's greatest hits marked the culmination of his contract with RSO Records. This compilation album included two new tracks, Time Is Time and Me Without You, both released as singles. However, due to Andy's escalating cocaine addiction and associated behavioral issues, RSO founder Robert Stigwood terminated his contract. The album also featured non-single songs such as After Dark and a duet with P.P. Arnold titled Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow, the latter of which had Barry Gibb's previous collaboration with Arnold. Concurrently, Gibb was invited to sing the first verse on Queen's Play the Game, with lead singer Freddie Mercury reportedly impressed by Andy's vocal abilities. Although the existence of this recording has been subject to speculation, some sources claim it was found in Queen's archives in 1990, although it has not been heard by collectors. During a taping of The John Davidson Show in January 1981, Andy crossed paths with actress Victoria Principal, sparking a highly publicized romance. During their relationship, Andy expanded his ventures beyond the recording studio. 
He took on the role of co-host on the television music show Solid Gold from 1981 to 1982 alongside Marilyn McCoo. Additionally, he ventured into musical theater, performing in Gilbert and Sullivan's The Pirates of Penzance in Los Angeles and Andrew Lloyd Webber's Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat on Broadway. However, Andy's struggle with addiction led to frequent absences, resulting in his dismissal from both Joseph and Solid Gold. Broadway producer Zeph Buffman praised Andy's talent but noted his inconsistency, stating that he was the best actor among the Joseph cast but struggled with reliability due to his personal challenges. Reflecting on Andy's death, Buffman described him as being filled with remorse after succumbing to his vices. Solid Gold producer Brad Lackman remembered Andy as a charming and charismatic performer battling internal demons, expressing his belief that Andy's desire for acceptance was overshadowed by his personal struggles. In August 1981, Andy collaborated with then-girlfriend Victoria Principal on a rendition of the Everly Brothers classic, All I Have to Do is Dream, after hearing her singing voice in the shower. The duet marked Andy's final official single and his last entry on the US charts, reaching number 51. Principal, reflecting on their time together, noted Andy's increasingly erratic behavior and concerning physical appearance, which she attributed to drug use. Their relationship came to an end when Principal issued an ultimatum for Andy to choose between her and drugs. Shortly after, Andy began dating actress Kari Michelson, whom he met during a guest appearance on the NBC sitcom Gimme a Break. In 1984 and 1985, Andy successfully fulfilled two contracts at the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas. Later in 1985, after his family intervened, Andy sought treatment for his addiction, which led him to spend time at the Betty Ford Center. During his rehabilitation period, Andy embarked on touring small venues, showcasing his own hits along with cover songs. He made guest appearances on television sitcoms like Punky Brewster and Gimme a Break. Following a successful tour of East Asia, he continued performing regularly in Las Vegas and Lake Tahoe. He headlined the Vina del Mar Festival in Chile, captivating audiences for two consecutive nights. Additionally, Andy entertained crowds during a two-week residency at San Francisco's historic Fairmont Hotel in March 1986. In the spring of 1987, Andy underwent another round of drug rehabilitation, hopeful that this time he had successfully overcome his bad habits. Later that year, Andy returned to the studio and recorded four songs, including Man on Fire, which was later released posthumously in 1991. Another track, Arrow Through the Heart, marked Andy's final recording and was featured on VH1's Behind the Music series and later included in the Bee Gees Mythology box set in 2010, co-written by Andy with his brothers Barry and Maurice. In early March 1988, Barry Gibb orchestrated a deal with Island Records in England for Andy's recording contract, aiming for a new album release in 1988. After Clive Banks from Island Records UK heard the demos he planned to release a single in Europe that spring, followed by another single in the summer, with the album to follow. However, Andy panicked, missing meetings with the record company, erratic behavior and personal struggles with songwriting, led to the deal falling through, blaming himself for the difficulties. In early 1988, Andy appeared to have overcome his addictions and regained his health, but he continued to battle depression stemming from his breakup with Victoria Principal. According to his brother Robin Gibb, Andy's decline was rapid, with him sinking into a deep state of depression. Despite efforts from his brothers Maurice and Barry to help, with Barry regretting a nasty argument the two had, Andy slipped back into alcohol abuse. On 5 March 1988, Andy celebrated his 30th birthday in London while working on his new album. However, just two days later, he was admitted to John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford after complaining of chest pains. At around 8.30 a.m. on 10 March 1988, Andy's doctor informed him that further tests were necessary to determine the cause of his chest pains. Shortly thereafter, Andy lost consciousness and passed away due to myocarditis, an inflammation of the heart muscle most likely triggered by a virus. His years of drug use had also contributed to the weakening of his heart. This diagnosis was confirmed by William Shell, a cardiologist who had previously treated Andy. Following the announcement of Andy's death, his ex-wife, Kim Reader, expressed that she had anticipated such news, stating, I always knew that one day I'd get a call with news like this. It was only a matter of time. Andy shared a particularly close bond and deep connection with his oldest brother Barry, who had mentored him throughout his career, provided backing vocals on many of his songs, and collaborated with him on songwriting. Barry emphasized the loyalty Andy had for him, commenting, Andy and I were twins just as much as Robin and Maurice were, in every sense of the word. We looked alike, we had similar moles, similar birthmarks, everything. Andy's family refuted speculation of overdose, attributing his death to natural causes resulting from years of substance abuse. 
Andy's body was flown to the United States, where he was interred at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Hollywood Hills, Los Angeles. His headstone bears the inscription, Andy Gibb, March 5, 1958 to March 10, 1988, an everlasting love. The words are tribute to one of his notable hit singles. And there you have it. Andy Gibb's legacy as a talented musician and heartthrob continues to resonate with fans worldwide. Despite his struggles with fame and addiction, he will always remain a cherished part of music history. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Take care and bye for now.